Здравствуйте, друзья. Сегодня мы будем говорить о том, как кибератаки влияют. Hello, dear friends. We're going to speak about how cyber attacks are influencing the stock exchange prices. If we look at the statistics for the last 15 years, approximately 200 cyber attacks were in the financial industry against financial organizations. Partially, there was an influence on the stock exchange prices, share prices, capitalization of companies, and this strongly influenced them. And this process of introduction of cyber crimes and cyber violations in the financial infrastructure, it becomes more and more viable. So to figure out how can we and should we fight against it, what are the types of cyber attacks, <coughs> what in the future uh, should be invested from this point of view and from the point of view of stock exchange uh, price building and uh, tools, different tools and stock exchanges. So I would like to discuss this topic and today uh, We are going to be helped uh, by Alexey Lukatsky, business consultant in informational business. business. Alexey, hello, from Positive Technologies, and Alexander Goncharov, the Sberbank CIB, <laughs> Markets and Capitals. Well, I would like to begin in the beginning. How do you divide and what are the types of those cyber attacks directed against financial infrastructure, stock exchange activities and uh, prices of different shares? Alexei, how can we divide them by which types? Well, there are traditional attacks, for example, breaking in into the company or breaking it into that its social networks, publication of something negative about the company, which immediately will uh, influence negatively on the shares, like it was for, with Polypharma. 20 billion uh, was the drop of capitalization of the company just a couple of days ago. And there were situations where the company was broken in, uh, personal uh, data of their clients is running out, it becomes known, and depending on how the company behaves, they immediately starting negative PR around the company and it drops the price shares, but not for a long time ago. According to different researchers, in a day or two, shares can come back. And option number three, when they distribute fake press releases on behalf of investment analytics or on behalf of some mass media or on behalf of the company, where they define negative events for the company, for example, arrest of the CEO or possibly sanctions uh, against the company. And if other investment analysts don't check it, then it influences the drop of the shares. Well, social networks uh, gave fake news and there was a lot of options like that and even something was related with the White House because White House was attacked, but it was not a fake, it was a breach of the Associated Press and their social networks. But in dollar yen, there was a serious uh, drop, and similar story was with the shares uh, of prohibited company Meta. But uh, this story also happened uh, from the point of view of the firing of the head of the company. But then this information was checked, and then every trading day, some information of this type and fakes uh, are happening. Yaroslav. From your point of view, what do you think, and from the point of view of your experience, how can we fight those cyber attacks, and how seriously can they damage the company? Well, they can damage significantly, as Alexei already said. We've seen a lot of cases when they've been influencing the stock prices, and in some cases, stock prices were going back very fast. But generally speaking, if you will look at investors, if you will look at companies, Well, for the investors, what is important? Predictability and future. Investors buy the future of the company, investment history, therefore having cases when something was happening, investors cannot guarantee that this will also, the company will also be protected in the future. And also, more particularly, it's a common thing in the West. Investors cannot guarantee that uh, the company will not be uh, judged uh, uh, by big amounts, which will... S everything should be defined at, at the placement, at the initial placement. No, 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 no. There should be... It's a precedent law. Precedent law were, well, for example, there was an example of Capital One in 2019. American banking system, they have established a fund for $190 million dollars to compensate damages to clients which have suffered from these uh, breaches, direct financial loss uh, that has been reflected in capitalization of the company. The shares of the company have dropped by 15%. And of course, naturally speaking, 
there's a lot of ways how can we sa keep ourselves safe from this? First of all, development of internal practices of cybersecurity, connecting professionals, and these are questions to specialists. And we can say that all the investors want these to be available in the company. All of them have been asking about it. And they are searching for these so that all trading companies would be protected in the cybersecurity perimeter. Okay, Alexi, can you tell me, please, are there effective methods of protection? Have they been developed from those options that you've listed previously? Well, there are methods, but the question is, well, there are methods and how to apply them. And there's a big number of solutions and a big company, any big company that comes to the market, depending on the stock exchange, there's a listing examples to provide security and demonstrate it. That's why many companies, they go into certificate of their processes of informational security according to international standards. However, sometimes it becomes into some paper component. That's why it is very important not just to get some uh, sticker on your side that yes, we do comply to certain requirements, but with your actions, you should demonstrate that we're not just speaking about security, but we are proving this, confirming this. So that's why bug bounty program is a good example when the company says, okay, guys, I'm so open and confident in my security that I'm opening to everybody possibility of breaking me and I'm ready to pay for being broken. And if you break me, I will pay you a bounty. It's a mature company. It's confident in processes. And therefore, this has been transferred to the market. Market understands that the company truthfully is not covering itself with some papers, but realistically is ready to protect itself, its own assets, assets of its clients. And therefore, even if this company will be broken, it will be quickly reacting to this it will behave properly with the shareholders with investors with mass media and market will react more positively to it and sometimes there will be no drop at all if you will work properly so it's not only a technical component and organizational and legal one and plus their openness and confidence in their strength well, as a practicing trader, I'm interested in another topic. Well, there is algorithmic trade, and this is very common thing. It's a common thing, and uh, perhaps there are certain schemes, certain programs and counter programs against certain algorithmic programs. Back in time, when we started the 1990s, uh, in the middle 90s, we've been trading in Russian stock exchanges. We also started creating, well, market makers started using robots uh, for building uh, double-sided uh, quotations. And I do remember how it was developed in order for this robot, uh, well, to move him from the position because it was working very schematically. Well, depending on the volume and uh, share prices, there was a big number number of small applications like one contract, one, 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 DDoS attack and market maker robot algorithm was moving. But right now, on which level all this history is located, if you know about this software bots? Can we say that against market makers, they can apply such algorithms, which could be called cyber threats because these are serious banks and serious counter developments? Plus machine learning, artificial intelligence, whatever you call it, it's also used not only in some good purposes, but it also can be used in reverse purposes. I have a big amounts of data how investors behave, analytics behave, and how business behaves when they purchase shares and sell shares. We put it in a model of machine learning. It analyzes it and it says, well, with these conditions, market will behave this way. And that's why I can use it for predicting the price of shares and buy them. And I can use it to move the market. But fortunately, well, fraudsters, classical cyber cr criminals are not moving this direction because it requires certain knowledge from them, non-traditional one, how to break or ho how to upload the malicious code or how to send phishing press release. Well, fortunately to all of us, they have not reached to put it on the flow, but certain experiments, research on the other side of the barricades is already conducted. So you cannot call it a cyber crime, cyber attack when for one algorithm they create another algorithm so this is intellectual war yeah war like any war you know 
Okay, if the company is being placed, if you go to the open market, which role is being played uh, so the sustainability of this company in the assessment and capitalization, which conditions and requirements investors are providing and practices, etc. <clears throat> well, honestly speaking, it was a good idea from Alexei uh, as well. <laughs> and I will definitely speak about it, maybe from stock exchange, from central banks. Uh, well, most likely when the company comes to the stock exchange, us and regulators are being checked by different criteria. It's good that the company would be uh, profitable, that would have good story, that it would be adequate, uh, adequately loaded with debts and very good alternative management so that we would have committees, we would have some financial audit, then board of directors being selected that this company is managing. So therefore, this is a very good idea to add list of requirements and add some certificate of the audit and cybersecurity. So to put a check mark, somebody have checked everything. Well, everything is working. Is it okay? You are protected. That investor will also be protected in the future. So without certificate of positive technologies, they will not even be allowed to the market. Well, we are for competition. We like competition. We like certification. And we like to have a good provider, of course, in cybersecurity. Well, I will tell you more. It's not right thing to speak about a specific provider or certification because at a certain moment of time, this idea will go down to the paper security as it often happens. Everybody will receive this check mark in order to prove that they are normal and to increase their price and capitalization. But if the company will not just get this paper, but will open their systems for hackers of from the world, then by itself it's going to be a good proof that this company has built their processes of security properly. And the same regulators like central banks, Stack of Russia, Ministry of Digital Transformations are moving in a direction that in addition to paper requirements, they should request the uh, proof of resultativeness for uh, their uh, and Central Bank also has a lot of legislations about the security, but later on they have switched on this topic in operational risks. But for a certain period of time, informational security risks inside of the operational risks were taking very insignificant place. But right now when this become and when this started influencing the sustainability, digital sustainability of the financial organization, the picture have changed. And this topic of informational security, key risks inside of the operational risks plays with a new role and regulators started uh, calling off the licenses when the financial organization is not able to prove that everything is okay with the security. Alexei, can you tell me please, can we help to our regulators because the single scale regulators in the process of deciphering or the control over the manipulations and the stock exchange because if uh, not just hackers have stole some personal data but if they have seriously approached this process if they started uh, if they put themselves in some short positions on the shares of this company plus uh, the uh, auxiliary financial uh, instruments have been utilized for this and then they started systematically the circularly attack the company stole the data started to uh, fake uh, injections uh, through broken sites, uh, press releases, then through the informational agencies, information has been, uh, that director has been fired or director has arrested or something like that. And shares are just dropping, dropping, dropping. Uh, so after taking this short position, but then by closing this short position, they're using such large scale hacker attacks to receive uh, any kind of leverage uh, in just uh, leverage and profit on the market. So should central bank developed similar models like that and is there a demand for this before it became a mass story from the point of view of criminals and cyber criminals well building full-scale history from the side of regulators it's too early but we did have stories when criminals were breaking financial organizations and were influencing the stock exchange course several years ago there was a big story when the exchange rate started jumping and somebody was making hundreds of millions not rubles and central bank was investigating and was attracting companies specializing on security in order to understand whether the story of a, a country of cyber criminals whether this financial organization decided to manipulate the market 
And without specialists, it's impossible. Yes, there is also a case when I was fine. Uh, there was a London fixing in uh, many people already are in prison uh, in the West, but they've been manipulating a legal uh, rate and fixing on the stock exchange market because it was a significant closure of London stock exchange. That's why they've used very serious fluctuations in order to receive illegal profit. And this is a consequence of the debt. But as a result, yes, it also has left. So as a result, okay, let's speak about the future from your point of view, Yaroslav, which threats cyber criminals uh, can uh, be presented in the nearest future for Russian market, for which uh, sectors it is more sensitive story and what can be done about it? Well, first of all, I would like to say that these are financial sectors, communication sectors, everything which is related with the FMCG sector, personal data, big data, <clears throat> because everything that was ordered, uh, personal data, and uh, first of all, First of all, it influences that it will reduce the loyalty of database to the given company, to the given brand. People don't like when the data is being published in a network. And the second of all, this can influence... This can attract uh, some regulatory penalties, uh, for example, uh, call, call off of licenses or... or penalties from the side of the regulators, very big penalties uh, for the leakage of personal data, and this can influence a financial, well, the most painful place, the weakest place, this is something on the surface. Well, I'm not considering some events, heavy events, uh, relatively speaking, there is a manufacturer uh, together with a factory and somebody have introduced enter this factory and stop the production. This is also a big event with a negative sign, which can influence... Well, it's a common activity because they have to get this profit. It has influenced the activity of the company and uh, maybe the shares uh, should be shared or maybe some uh, schematos should be invented, a uh, financial one, in order to get a benefit. Uh, so there can be a double activity. This can be something like <clears throat> breaking in like Colonial Pipeline was in America, a big pipeline in the eastern uh, uh, shoreline because they just wanted to get a ransom. They are not attacking. They didn't do anything, but they wanted and they have got $90 million for unblocking this pipeline. And they've created deficit of fuel on the eastern uh, shore. And, and futures have grown by 6%, by the way. And I've heard the number uh, from American treasuries when they've been showing it for the last year, year before that. And in result of these hacker attacks, uh, American banks have transferred uh, to hackers. Well, for them, all hackers are Russian hackers. $12 billion. $12 billion American banks have transferred for all these operations uh, uh, which were done by hackers. Well, it's understandable that uh, there could be different spheres and op manipulation uh, possibilities can be different ones. That's why, completing our conversation, I would like to ask you a similar story from your point of view. What are those painful points in addition to personal data and in addition to what we've been speaking about in, in, in the future? Where can we expect uh, the main impact? Well, the fact that we are, see today in something that will become popular next year, so-called supply chain attacks when they are breaking not specific uh, uh, client but the supplier of the product for example breaking the supplier uh, of terminals for the or, or broker services and when the software which has been realized and following function will be deployed all over the old terminals then this will give us a possibility to manipulate a big number of financial assets so we are not breaking the victim, but those who supply the software, uh, this what becomes popular. And the second story, which will be increasing, and there are several episodes when the same machine learning deep fakes 
but uh, many ones when there is a call uh, from CEO or a well-known person or investment analytic and he verbalizes with his real voice something that is not a truth and on the basis of this information and considering the fact that uh, the mail can be replaced and phone number can be replaced basically on the basis of this information they come to the conclusions which influence the market cyber criminals from this point of view play the role of who breaks and of course all the surface is taken by the one who takes the order well the interesting topic they can break uh, this bridge between the client and broker for example uh, client broker of course definitely it's going to be losing for the client and i forgot another topic which is very important which is may maybe interesting because crypto industry uh, became very popular but the number of breaking break-ins and hacker attacks and just uh, recently the final attack in six six hundred million dollars have left and i have a question because i also have faced in about uh, 10 years ago that you know using uh, under hacker attacks you know money have been stolen and we can write it off we can write many things off and hacker attack or covering attack to this steal the money of the clients how common is this and will this be uh, coming from crypto industry and going into classical industry well it's already transferring it started from classical industry and then it has moved into this one so it does happen and alongside when they started speaking about hackers and they started uh, take telling that and big amount uh, of their own losses, deficiencies uh, against hackers. But, well, this is unfortunately the truth. Well, thank you very much. Uh, today we've been speaking about how hackers and hacker attacks influencing the stock exchange, pricing and capitalization of big companies, and what is to be done and how can we fight against this negative process. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.